Sapphire Now. This is SAP's annual conference where all their business gets done. They showcase their technologies. I'm John Furrier. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's exclusive coverage of Sapphire Now. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the ceiling from the noise. We'll, start all the programs we'll go out there wherever there's a story to be broken. Every, any action, we will go there on the ground. We are live in Orlando. And behind us, you can see they're getting ready for the press conference for, for mobility. Earlier we had Bill McDermott on, a lot of sports athletes, tech athletes as we say. This is theCUBE. And I'm here going to break it down so far uh, here at Sapphire. Day one's halfway in the books. And I'm going to bring in uh, analyst, co-founder uh, David Floyer from Wikibon.org and big data analyst Jeff Kelly from Wikibon to break down the analysis, the breaking analysis here at Sapphire. We've heard some messaging, we've heard some uh, vendor spiel, we've heard some customers. Uh, David Floyer, you're out on the ground, you're uh, <laughs> squirreling away all those nuts of value and signal from the noise. Break it down for us. What's the uh, signal, break away the signal from the noise for us? Okay, there's two, two pieces that we could look into and I think the more interesting one is the, uh, is the potential added value. Where does SAP go next? Um, so what, what I think is the, the, the strategy, the, 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 their, their uh, ambition here is to start connecting different companies together. For example, the supply chains through, just to take one example, the, uh, the car industry. How can they provide SAP, not just for one organization, but for a series of organizations, pulling the pieces together, creating extra additional value by going uh, across different companies. I think that is their long-term strategy and they're, st and they're obviously struggling with it, uh, how to get it out there. And one of the struggles that they, uh, the, there is for them implementing so this sort of thing is just the size of the database, the, the response time across all of these different things. So they have to start designing the system, in my view, in a, in a, in a different way. HANA is the start of it, but they have to really start thinking about database design in a completely different way. And I, again, with the, their uh, acquisition of um, uh, Sybase, et cetera, they could be in a position to think in a, in a different way about how they can go across company, how they can, for example, have mega data centers where a particular industry is focused on it. Those are some of the exciting things that I think uh, are in the future for SAP. I want, to, I want to get Jeff Kelly in here and I want you guys to riff on the following concepts and, and discussions from uh, Bill McDermott, the CEO, co-CEO on stage said, you know, they want to know what, uh, customers want to know what their customers are thinking, what they're interested in, what they're doing, so they can be in sync and be real time at the speed of business. That's the innovation agenda. That's essentially speed and analytics. Obviously the cloud's going to enable that, guys. So you got big data, Jeff, there to talk about. But also, David Florier, the cloud is under flux. We saw you know, SAP three years ago on a path and strategy. Not a lot of strategic changes for SAP. However, the force majeure, as they say, is HANA, has changed the game big time. The, the acceleration of how relevant HANA is in the equation. And all, also, the on-demand pressure from Amazon. So you got the business model pressure of licensing deployments and integrations. At the same time, you got the cloud is evolving and SAP doesn't have a clear cloud vision in, in, based on my certain uh, early opinions as of today. What's your take of the cloud? And then Jeff, I'd like you to talk about big data. Well, let me t just to comment on the, on the cloud thing. They've tried to have uh, SAP as a service and uh, to, to make, uh, to provide it. But the fundamental architecture of their system men, means that they have to have a separate instance for every single customer. And it, and it becomes very little different from putting it on their own piece of hardware. So they haven't got multi-tenancy multi built in, they haven't got a database which really scales and becomes a true uh, software as a service type offering. And that's really what I was alluding to in that uh, those remarks about the database. They need to really start restructuring it so that they can provide that sort of service across organizations as a cloud service. That, that's the area that I really think they need to, to focus on. And uh, if they don't do it themselves, we're going to see some of the other cloud providers come into that space. And that, that to me is the biggest risk that SAP has if they don't 
change the fundamental structure of their, of their software, the, they're going to uh, have problems. So Jeff Kelly, you commented earlier that based upon your data and talking to customers, and then now recently validated by the New York Times report where Vsal Sika was quoted saying that they're running clouds <coughs> uh, bigger than Salesforce.com's entire, entire operation. That's SAP quoting. Um, that's the New York Times quoting some of the data that you've been finding the same thing. I mean, you have kind of an identity crisis. I'll see the analytics on the mobility message, home run, not love that. However, the cloud's in flux, where that's going to fit in, it's, it's, it's kind of a jump ball right now. Where does HANA fit in and, and big data, et cetera? Right, well I think uh, a couple things. One, to, to comment on what David was mentioning. Um, so, you know, what we're hearing is that SAP's new HANA cloud service is really, they're, they're actually pricing this uh, kind of with, similar to, as they would uh, with an on-premise license, which suggests to me that you're right on, David, that they don't really have a true cloud offering in that sense, that it's a, a elastic, allows you to scale up and scale down and take advantage of those real cloud capabilities that, for the reason people go to the cloud. Um, in terms of big data uh, fitting into their cloud strategy, I think, again, what they're seeing, what we're seeing in the industry, with having talked to a lot of customers uh, in both the Hadoop space, but also in other big data platform spaces, is a lot of companies will often start uh, big data projects in the cloud, it's easy to, on Amazon, for instance, to spin up a Hadoop cluster and start doing some experimentation. Uh, what we find next, however, as we're kind of moving from that early adopter phase to the early majority, is that more and more organizations want to then take that early in the cloud deployment and move it back in-house for a variety of reasons. It could be security, it could be just the scale of the economics actually does make sense to bring it back in-house uh, uh, at some time. So I think perhaps SAP is recognizing this uh, trend and realizes you know, we've got to find it, make it easier for customers to get up and running with HANA quickly um, so that they can start doing some of that experimentation with the analytics uh, and predictive analytics. And then if we can bring them back in house, great. But we really got to give them an opportunity to get up and running quickly rather than um, going through the entire uh, you know, traditional sales cycle and getting an on-premise deployment. So I think that's really where they're trying to go with this. Again, the challenge is going to be the actual uh, the pricing model and the business model, there's a the technology component as David talked about. Um, and people, when they want to go in the cloud, they want that scale, the elasticity, and it doesn't appear that I, from what I can see, and from, what I, from the customers I've spoken with, that SAP uh, offers that at this moment. So I, I was really impressed, David, I want to get your take on this, because obviously at EMC World last week, we heard the transformation message. Obviously it's a big deal, IT transformation. We heard Jed York up on stage talking about how they've transformed IT. He's saying things like, we wanted to build things like in Star Trek, Star Wars. We want to eliminate the back office hardware, focus on the software to give that user experience to the fan in the you know, billion dollar stadium that they have. But you know, in a way, IT is looking to transform. Um, what conversations have you had early on here at Sapphire, and what's your analysis of the SAP landscape for businesses? As business tries to transform, what are you finding? Obviously virtualization of, of SAP, something that you've looked at recently. I know you're going to present that uh, tomorrow. Um, but what have you know, talked to any customers and practitioners here, and what are you finding? Well, we talked to a number of uh, practitioners and customers, and um, it, in, on, the, on the infrastructure side, most customers have a strategy of moving towards uh, 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 IT as a service. Uh, they've uh, woken up to the fact that if they don't do it, they're going to be outmaneuvered by the Amazons of the world and the new cloud pro service providers. They've got to do that. They've got to show that they are competitive with those offerings and, and that they can offer the same sort of deals, the same sort of services quickly, effectively, on the in, on the on in-premise circumstances, the uh, the other interesting thing is that uh, when you look at the cost of SAP on the infrastructure, etc., the the most expensive component of that is is the database itself. It's the Oracle database, or even if they use uh, the Microsoft SQL database, it's the database itself, and. They are looking for ways that they can reduce that cost by consolidation. So there's a big move towards consolidation of, of SAP databases, uh, consolidation of the SAP instances, uh, getting SAP instances off old hardware that's been around for ages. I was talking to one of the customers who uses a, a um, HP 3000 system still. Uh, they must be getting cannibalizing the spare parts for it. So bringing those in, uh, reducing the cost of the number of software licenses, the database licenses, those are areas where you can save on infrastructure cost. But equally, 
uh, they need to consolidate the, all of those SAP instances because there's opportunities to save business costs as well by reducing the number of, uh, uh, for example, by having a common uh, financial definition across all of the SAP instances and being able to reduce the number of uh, uh, financial analysts that they have. Okay, we're here live. This is SiliconANGLE. We've got exclusive coverage of SAP. Behind me, you could see the action going on. I don't know if you can see that. There's a press conference. We're in the Global Communications Center. We're on the ground live in Orlando. We're going to hear from Sanjay Putin and a, and a bunch of other execs, the president of the company, talk about mobility. We're here with David Floyer and uh, Jeff Kelly, senior Wikibon analysts, breaking it down. I got to uh, uh, ask you, David and Jeff, to comment on some of the messaging. Obviously, you know, Bill McDermott's a showman. We're going to have Schnabe tomorrow to put some more meat on the bone. Um, but obviously, they, 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 um, SAP loves to trot out the customers. And one thing I really love about SAP's conference is it's very relevant, but they let customers do the talking. And, yeah. and ultimately, in my yeah. view, you're always judged by the company that you keep, and that's certainly an indicator, and they have some good customers. But up there, Jed York from the San Francisco 49ers said, we are software driven. Now, I'll convert that to say software led, and David, you've been doing all the, the seminal work around software led infrastructure, AKA software defined, but he was referring to, I'm not relying on the hardware, I want a software world, I want to be nimble. I don't want to build a big scoreboard for $60 million because I can, guys have their own phones, they're spending the money, I'll put that money into other things, it could be analytics. But when he says software driven, okay, kind of take that to the next level. For customers out there that are looking at this, what does that mean? They, they want the flexibility of creating the infrastructure. We've got, we got a one minute hook here. Uh, 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 adapting it so that they can, uh, from a software perspective, uh, take, separate out the hardware itself, the disks and the, and the servers, from the way that that's all or orchestrated together and use the much cheaper services, keep the hardware for longer and keep the services above it, software-led, as opposed to having Okay. standalone service and uh, arrays. Okay, we are going to go to the live press conference now. It's going to start in a few minutes, but we want to take a break here. We're under a tight deadline by the SAP Global Communications team. We want to respect that. We're here, exclusive coverage, SiliconANGLE, we keep on breaking down the analysis. David Floyer and Jeff Kelly, the analysts on the ground. We are going to go where the stories are. We are in the Global Communications Center. This is where all the access is happening, talking to the top execs. Uh, Deputy Commissioner of the NBA. We have top execs from the SAP and customers. We'll be right back, and we're going to carry the live press conference here at Sapphire now, and uh, we'll tune in and keep watching.